Okay. Yes, ebook capsule wardrobe essentials. Um, and she's also my roommate, which makes her very special. Yeah. yeah. Uh, without further ado, <laughs> here is a packing light. Please, uh, please enjoy. Hey guys! I'm recording it because my readers have asked me to record this session because they couldn't hear. So, hello readers, I'm doing this for you. Um, thank you guys for coming today to Packing Light. Um, how does she use travel clothing? I am Alex, and let me move the slide. I'm Alex, and I am the editor and founder for TravelFashionGirl.com. If you're not familiar with my site, it is a packing website for women to not only come and find out how to pack light, how to do it efficiently, how to travel carry-on only for any length of trip, and to do it with a bit of style. So um, that's what Travel Fashion Girl is about. And a little bit of background about me. Um, I used to work in the fashion industry for seven years, had a corporate career, left the cubicle world and have been traveling now since 2008. I took what was a career break for three months and caught the, well, and for Americans, three months is a long time. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. three whole months, you know, I was super <laughs> excited. So um, three months ended up turning into six years. So I'm a full-time traveler, I've been doing it ever since, and Travel Fashion Girl came about from my endless quest to pack light and do a carry-on because this was me. My round the world trip in 2010, I looked like a pregnant turtle. <laughs> I was just, you have no idea how much weight. Oh, I, yeah. It was, you have no idea. I mean, this front pack is actually the size of probably the suitcase. Of what, wow. it, of what it carries. And in there was all like souvenirs from Thailand. You know, you find so many cool things along the way. I don't do it anymore, but either way. The point is <laughs> that this was the way I was packing it. That was not cool for a lot of reasons. and. If you're all travelers, no matter how you travel, where you go, we all may do it differently, but we want to have the best time. And to maximize our experience, packing light really makes it more comfortable. So if you guys are here, I don't need to sell you on it. So I'll um, continue on. So um, the key to packing light is being selective with your clothing options. And one of the things that I show women how to do on the site is create a capsule wardrobe for travel. And you may be wondering, what exactly is a capsule wardrobe? It is basically a snippet of your closet, like the best 10 to 15 pieces. If you could only own these, this clothing, this is it. So today, I've created a sample capsule wardrobe for you. I should probably sound this um, Sample capsule wardrobe for you, and I like to challenge myself. So when Delcy offered to send me um, one of their really cute suitcases, which I'm I chose this 19-inch shadow 2.0. There's our Delcy representative to, um, right there, guys. And I forgot to mention, you guys get a chance to win this really rad, beautiful, lovely suitcase I'm during the presentation today. So thank you for coming. But when they offered to hook me up with a suitcase, I chose their smallest one, 19 inches. So I really wanted to extra challenge myself and show you guys that it's actually very doable to pack light. So here, I have a round the world trip worth of clothing. This um, packing list is based on one of my universal ones called the Maximista, which is a 15 piece capsule wardrobe packing list. I have a um, selection of clothing for summer, for winter, and you'll see my combination of outfits. I'll show you in a little bit um, how you can use it to go around the globe, around the world, or if you have a multi-climate trip, like I am right now. I'm Chicago, it's freezing, I'm going to Miami, it's going to be blazing hot. So it had to work it in a multi-climate trip. And I put all this clothing in this bag, along with even more clothing, because I, this is for my presentation, but I also need clothes for myself as well. So, you know, it's really doable, guys. So even if you have a long trip, it doesn't mean you have to overpack. Now, there are five key factors that you have to consider when choosing clothing for a trip. Um, weather, activities, local customs, budget and trip length. One thing I forgot to mention, everybody in here today gets a free copy of my packing ebook. So if you put your email right here, I'll go ahead and email that to you um, when I get back into LA. If you can just put your email and pass it back, and there's one here as well. So five factors to choose travel clothing. Weather. Okay, weather is the easiest thing that everybody tends to forget. I did it. I went to South Africa, um, in their winter ones and thought to myself, well, it's Africa, obviously it's hot all the time, right? 
Needless to say, I showed up completely unprepared, rolled up in Johannesburg with nothing of warmth, and there's ice on the ground. It was freezing cold, but I was a rookie traveler. It was in the very beginning, and I didn't know. And it could have been very easily avoided by just going on weather.com. So super easy, check the weather, guys. Um, because also, if you like me, you're going somewhere in our summer, it might not be the summer in the country you're going to. Or their summer may be a little less summery than what you're used to. So check weather.com. Two, activities. Make a list of the activities you plan to, um, to take part, participate in. And obviously, maybe you don't want to plan everything in advance, but you do know what you're interested in actually doing. So you know if you're a culture vulture. You know if you like going out to the best restaurants. You know what type of travel you like. So make a list of that so you can determine what clothing will work best for those activities. Number three, local customs. I really encourage my readers to dress respectfully when they go to another country. And so, Research the local customs in the um, place you're going. You know, just Google how to pack for India. You know, um, what are the clothing guidelines for Egypt? And I'm going to tell you guys a story. It's not the best story, but I do want to share it. I think it's very important. Um, I, when I was in Egypt in 2008, I was on a group tour, and one of the girls that I met on the trip, she's a beautiful young 19-year-old girl, excited, you know, new to traveling, and. Um, Fair, um, fair skinned and red hair. So already, she draws a lot of attention to herself in, you know, when she's traveling. All of us as tourists draw a lot of attention to ourselves already. Well, she's also very beautifully luxurious. And her clothing is naturally, when you've got assets, it's hard to cover those things up, you know what I mean? Naturally. But in, when you're in Egypt or a more conservative country, you really kind of have to make that extra effort. And she didn't do it on purpose, but she couldn't help it. Either way, we were shopping in Aswan, which is an amazing market. You guys know, obviously, know I like to shop because I showed you guys how I used to pack. But we went shopping, and we actually got chased out by an angry mob of men. This was so scary, and I'm not telling you this to scare you guys off because traveling isn't scary. But it, she actually um, also got groped, and it was a really uncomfortable situation. It was. She wasn't covered up, and it would have been easily avoided by covering your shoulders, covering your knees, really basic things. So do look up the local customs. What happened doesn't excuse it because of the way she was dressed. But when we're in another country, we're not on, you know, we're on their turf. Their rules apply. So look it up. Just research. Number four, budget. Do you have money to invest in new travel gear, or are you going to shop in your own closet? I say shop in your own closet. That's why I brought you my closet to show you how to pick the right clothing from your own stuff so you don't have to invest a lot of money. There are things that you, sh you should invest in, um, like luggage, shoes, um, pants, outerwear, things that are gonna keep you warm. You know, we'll go more into that later on. But, you know, take a look, know what your budget is. And trip length. Now, the general rule is if you, um, you pack as much for one week as you would for one year. So the only difference between a in a trip length is that you'll be doing more laundry. So you know every week or so you're, you're going to have to wash your clothes. Doesn't mean you have to pack extra stuff. So it's the same stuff. Now, how many of you guys take fabric into consideration when you choose your clothing? Awesome, perfect. For me, it is the ultimate thing. It's what I obsess over. And when I've worked with other travelers on the road, this is the part that they found the most helpful. So I'm going to share that with you guys today. Now, let's go shopping together in my little um, impromptu shopping area. <laughs> so we're looking at stuff, you know, how to choose the right clothing. I go through a whole process. So I'm going to use this top as an example because it has a lot of really good properties that I like. So I pick up a clothing item, and the first thing I do is I weigh it. I assess, hey. This is heavy. It doesn't feel like weight in my hand. So, you know, pretty good. To use a scale or anything, we can kind of gauge some things weight. Um, obviously, the more lighter it is, the more ideal because you want to put less weight in your bag. The next thing I do is I determine how bulky it is. If it's going to take too much space in my bag, I fold it up as small as it would, replicating what I would do when I packed it in my packing cube, which I'll show you guys later. And then I roll it up. 
as I would in my packing cube. So, rolled up really small, weighs nothing. That's a pretty good candidate for traveling, I'd say. But let's look at the rest of this, these properties and see if it is. Is it too sheer or transparent? And unfortunately, it seems like some of the best fabrics are a bit on the sheer side, especially when you put them in the sunlight. And ladies, always do a sunlight test when um, you, you're choosing your clothing because sometimes you can see a lot more of the direct sunlight. And so depending on where you're going, that may be okay. So if you're walking to Chicago, nobody's going to you know, bat an eyelash. But if you're going somewhere like India, you may want to reconsider that top. And also, if you have to layer, that's a second piece that you have to wear. So you want the one thing that you pack to be versatile to maximize your options. So try to just stick for, to one piece that can do the job. Is it appropriate for the weather? Um, regardless of thickness uh, or bulk, just because it's heavy doesn't mean it's going to keep you warm. So you've got to determine, you know, is this fabric appropriate for my weather, for the weather? Is it going to keep me warm in um, this in Chicago when it's freezing? Is it going to keep me cool in the humidity of Indonesia? So you've got to ask yourself this question. And one of the biggest misconceptions, and it's a bit of a controversy, is uh, with cotton. Um, cotton is a great fabric. It's very breathable, but it's ideal for um, warm climates when you're on a shorter vacation. When you're not wa hand washing, when you're not doing a laundry, it's very comfortable. I really prefer synthetics because they dry quickly and they replicate the properties from technical travel clothing without the price tag. And you can go into your own closet without spending you know, 150 bucks on a travel top, let's say. And you can figure out you know, which have similar properties to something you pay a lot more money for. Um, merino wool is an excellent fabric. That's like the super fabric. So if you want to invest good money on on a fabric that's going to be keep you cool in the heat, it's going to keep you warm in the in the cold. Merino wool is definitely the way to go. It is worth that investment. And I actually got this to come to Chicago and also to test it out for you guys. But it's a merino wool um, hoodie. So it's one of those items that you do want to invest in outerwear. You don't want to pack all these big layers. So the outerwear you do take, you want to make it count. So this is Marina Wool. It was more than I would prefer to pay for a hoodie. But when I'm traveling and my warmth is at stake, and it's, I only have two things because I always recommend two pieces of outerwear, this is really important to what fabric it is. So Marina Wool is good for that. And synthetics also tend to dry quicker. That's important for two reasons, even if you're not hand washing. In the heat, if you're walking around and this is not, if it's like cotton and it's absorbing moisture, you might feel sticky and sweaty and uncomfortable. If it's in the cold, you don't want cotton to be your base layer because likewise, it will absorb moisture while a synthetic fabric will wick it away. So what happens is, if you're wearing a base layer that absorbs moisture, it's not going to let the other top layers insulate you and keep you warm. So even you can have the best top layers, but if you're moist inside, that's not going to work. You're going to be cold. So and that's also not healthy as well. So weather. Is a fabric durable? So I really like to test out fabrics. I, I'm really mean to them. So I want to know if they're going to be good when I tell my readers, you know, this product's good, so I really beat them up. Um, replicate and abuse that a clothing item will take on a trip because you're wearing it constantly you're using it for all these different things so you really want to make sure it lasts so determine if that's going to fall apart if you bought something from you know like a forever 21 for example if you're going on a long trip this may not be the best idea if you're going on a business trip and you have a presentation for example and your button starts coming undone you want something quality for these situations obviously on vacation you know, anything goes, but you know, keep that in mind, durable. So, now that we've gone over the technical aspects of fabric, but it's super important, um, now it's time to try things on and play a little bit and talk more about how to actually put this capsule wardrobe together. So, each piece of clothing, here's the thing, okay, each piece of clothing should mix and match with every other item. 
And some people say, make sure that one matches with two other pieces, make sure it matches with three. I say make sure it matches with everything. If you want to really make this happen and you want to make it work and get the most out of your travel wardrobe, you've got to mix and match with everything. And take a look. These are the different outfits. Only some of the outfits that I created with this wardrobe. You know, I've got a bit of a winter going on here, transitional pieces, summer. So it's 25 outfits that you see in a collage over here. And that's an example with just 15 pieces of clothing for, t for two climates. So you, this fits in here. You know, that's not a lot of stuff. And you can go well over three weeks with just this stuff and have a unique outfit. So that's way more than enough for a week, for a year, and you can even get more creative and make more with this. So rules about creating this sort of a capsule wardrobe, you have to make sure each piece can be worn in various settings. So a black dress may be a great idea, and you may want a cocktail dress just in case you get invited to a wedding or meet a really handsome guy that takes you to a fancy meal. <laughs> But the reality is that might not happen. So let's not take a cocktail. It's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> we want it to happen. Although, in all fairness, if he's traveling, and I know I'm a budget traveler, he's probably not going to take me to a fancy dinner. He's happy he takes me to McDonald's. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you want your dress to be basic and versatile. Something you can dress up. Um, clothing. These pants, for example, I talk about them all the time on my website. They're from a brand called Anatomy, and they're just awesome. Literally, I'm here giving a presentation, but I've taken these hiking. I've played in the snow with them. You know, I can take them from the boardroom, essentially, to a mountain. So this is such a great, versatile piece. So you want stuff that like them. Um, the top that I was showing you before, you know, because of it's actually a good, it's travel wear. But because of its fabric properties, I can actually also wear this as a layer underneath the top. I can use it to just, you know, go sightseeing. I can use it to go trekking. So you want those items to it'll, it'll work for different scenarios. And again, no just in case I'm going to meet the guy of my dreams <laughs> items, OK? <laughs> um, oh, I'm going so quickly. I'm sorry I'm talking so fast. Um, OK. So mixing and matching. As I showed you guys, when you can mix and match the items you pack so much more than you actually need. And that's a big problem for us women. You know, we have closets. I don't know about you guys, but I had a massive closet before, like thousands of pieces of clothing. It was bad. Um, but you don't need to have that much. You can really, if you have the right pieces, even if you're your everyday wardrobe, you really can make so much. So let's look at what we have going on over here. This is one of my favorite things, actually. So this is a fun summer dress that I found in Thailand. And it's a great fabric um, for that weather because it's really light. I can scrunch it up. It doesn't wrinkle. What I forgot to mention, like your fabric should wrinkle. But that's obvious. Um, you know, so it's a great dress. But the cool thing with this, I can wear it, you know, like a moo, just nice and fresh and loose. But also, I got, um, put a little belt on it. You know, I can also, I like to tuck it into my bottoms. So I'll tuck it into my pants or my shorts to make it into a top. So you know, you really can get, when you have less clothing, it actually also makes you more creative. So that's definitely a bonus part of having less clothing. You can't get lazy and just throw anything on and wear it only once. You know, you've got to have fun with it. A pair of black jeans, easy. You don't really have to wash them very often. Goes with everything. They're very versatile. So, you know, before, the traditional travel clothing rules are, oh, don't pack jeans. They don't dry quickly. They're bad for travel. Well, actually, you only have to wash them. I mean, how often do you wash your jeans? We really technically don't have to. And when you're traveling, especially for longer lengths of time, you get kind of intimate with yourself. And you kind of do, um, does it smell <laughs> good, you know, and start doing sniff tests and everything. <laughs> times can I actually wear this before I have to wash it? <laughs> so you're going to yeah. take your clothing to another level, so don't be afraid <laughs> of that. So yeah, jeans are actually pretty cool, but ultra versatile. This will mix and match with anything. And what I tell my readers is 
it's not about being trendy. It's not about wearing, you know, fall 2014 latest styles. It's about you wearing how you, what you feel comfortable in. Ultimately, you know, you don't have to pack like a stereotypical traveler to go traveling. You could look like yourself because when you're happy and you feel comfortable, you're gonna have even like an even better experience. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about styles. I'm not preaching styles, but I mean trends. But I want you guys to, you know, keep your own style. Stay true to that. Another very important factor in creating this minimal capsule wardrobe is color. Now, if you're not great with color, then it's probably great to stick to neutrals. I'm very boring with color. I don't use prints, and I love wearing black. So for me, this is pretty easy. Mostly black in my um, little capsule wardrobe. But a few hints of other colors, a little bit of white, grays, blues I like. But generally speaking, you want to um, make sure that you know the color story, it's one color story, so it's easier to play around with it. Now, you can use the color wheel for ideas. If you look online, you can get lots of tutorials and it'll teach you about color, about color and mixing and matching and the different um, primary versus pastels and all those that work together. I'm not gonna bore you with the details right now, but you know, definitely research that. Again, if you're also not good with color, and generally speaking, half of your clothing should be color and half of it should be neutral. And a neutral color is black, gray, white, brown, navy, things that you can match with anything. So, you know, this could essentially be khaki, but it'll still match with everything else. So that's a neutral. Um, if you see half of the clothing kind of is a color. So even though I have my one print <laughs> over here, but it still goes with everything else. Another reason why you want it to match with everything, because if you are going on a trip with multi-climates, and the reason why I'm using that as an example, because that's the most challenging trip to pack for, done with various climates. Um, if it's one climate, it's a bit easier. So I'm gonna go with the most difficult example. So you want your things to be able to layer. If I'm wearing this top, I was wearing it yesterday during the day, I actually, threw on this underneath as I went out at night because it was going to be a little bit colder, so I put that together. You didn't really notice it too much, and it, and it went well. If it would have been extra cold, I probably would have thrown this on top or somewhere in the middle, you know. But it's okay, and I can mix and match because it all the colors all blend. But if you decide to just go, oh, that, that looks like a really good top. I'm going to pack that, I'm going to pack that. And I don't know if you guys have ever gotten to a destination. It's like, why did I, what did I just do? You know, nothing goes together. I've done that way too many times. And I want you guys to avoid making my mistakes. So making sure that the color is similar, that's very important. Now, this is another piece of the pie that's really important. Determine if your clothing looks um, good together. And it's about the style of the piece. And what happened was, I actually met a girl in Mexico who is traveling for five months with four pieces of clothing. That is wow. impressive. That's impossible. Wow. That's impressive on any level, but she was for four pieces of clothing. So I was learning so much at the time I was creating travel fashion girls. So I interviewed her, I studied her, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did you come up with this process? You know, I went like, you know, I broke it down. And she's now actually inspired my minimalist for um, six piece packing list. But she did it, and she said, well, you know, I figured if I need anything, I could buy it along the way. Yeah. And she did. At the end of her trip, I spoke to her again, you know, how did it go? She only bought two additional pieces of clothing. So still, and it's not like she was just hanging out on the beach all day. She was an active traveler. She wanted to go trekking. So she followed all of this criteria to determine um, the pieces that were the best for the trip. So she thought, okay, well, I can wear these pants at the beach. I can also wear them to go trekking. Cool, they're in the bag. This top, I like the color, you know, it's cool. I'm throwing it in the bag. I want a button up long sleeve shirt, so it's I can use it in various scenarios. Threw it in the bag. What she didn't do was try things on and see if they actually went together. Uh, you know, and that was her biggest mistake. So she was really unhappy with the outcome of her four pieces because she didn't try them on. And that's one thing that I know I'm, I've also been very guilty of, is just not testing things out. Now, not only to see how they, you know, if they work together, but, you know, for women, especially with our torso area, we need certain lengths for certain bottoms. So does this top 
look well with, with these pants? Does it need to be a little bit longer? Would I like it to be a little bit shorter? You want to see if that works well. Fabrics, you know, does this fabric <coughs> work with a pair of convertible, you know, cargo pants? Maybe not. You know, you could, but you want to see if the fabrics go well, the cut, the style, how it matches. And I already talked about layering it for the cold. And then the last part is trying everything on. I just touched on this right now. How is it, how important it is? You know, see how things look on you. Have a runway show. I'm sure that at some <laughs> way, at some point in your lives, you've stood in front of the mirror and, you know, done a little. <laughs> so do that. You know, look at it. Look at the outfit. See how they look on. It's. You know, it's not about, again, it's not about being a fat, you don't have to be a fashionable person, but you want to feel good, and you don't want to think about it. You don't want to spend time worrying about, oh my God, what am I going to wear today? You want to sightsee, you want to make the most of your time, especially if you're on a short trip, you've got to move, you know what I mean? You don't have time to think about it. So if you plan in advance, it's good to go. You know, I have an, um, actually have a new outfit planner that I'm going to be releasing to my readers very soon. It's not published yet. So um, you can take that outfit planner and basically plan out your outfits, which is pretty easy even if you do 30 days because you can reuse them, you don't have to use them you know, in that sequence, but write it down however that works for you. And the biggest piece of advice is don't forget your shoes. You know, try on the clothing, but if you don't put on your shoes, then you can arrive somewhere like me and just get there and think, oh wow, these were, it's a great outfit, I, I love my outfit, and then, oh man, my shoes don't match my pants, they look horrible with my pants. So, you know, I just kind of put it down for all my day, and really bummed me out, because I thought I had done a good job. So try on your shoes before you go. And talking about shoes, it's every woman's favorite and most miserable topic at the same time. Oh no, not the shoes, not the travel shoes. My readers love talking about travel shoes because it's so challenging. How do you pack enough shoes to go with your outfits and how do you know what's the right type of shoe? So I have a bit of a formula. I base them on number th like three pairs, one for comfort, one for function, and then a wild card. Let's get into shoes. How to choose three pairs of shoes for travel. So number one is comfort. Ooh, and I got them inside. Comfort, the shoes you'll be wearing the most for walking and sightseeing. Let me take a moment to un open up my cute little Delcy carrying on bag. I also, so I packed like if I was going on around the world trip for you guys, so. It was fun, it was challenging. In here, I've got my choice, my personal choice on the most neutral choice for everyone for three pairs of round the world shoes. Trainers. I'll put these in there. Um, sandals. <laughs> and some people feel more comfortable than others. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Got some fun little sandals that are can be they're hybrid and then I have my wild card. Got a pair of flats. You know, dress them up, dress them down. I think they're fun. So I'll put those aside for now. And there's, I have different examples. Of, obviously for every trip it's going to be very different. Not one is going to work for all. So just, just an example. Now, let's look at the comfort shoes. So these are my comfort the shoes that I'm going to be walking and I'm going to be sightseeing the majority of the time. They can be Birkenstocks, they can be a Merrill sandal, they can be whatever your comfort level requires. So you've got the shoe that you're going to be using the most. And you want that shoe to go with everything. So it doesn't have to be a black shoe. I actually like metallics like gold and silver because that also goes with everything and still makes it a little bit more dressy. So neutral shoe that goes with everything. Function. The shoes that you're going to be using for your special activity. Now, everybody has a different special activity. Um, some people like to go trekking. Others like to go dancing. Some people want to go to a really nice restaurant. Whatever your activity is, that thing that you do, and you may have several, but you know, there's always that one with the most difficult shoes to plan for. So, 
that's your functional shoe. That could be a heel, that could be a trainer, that could be a hiking boot. If you're just hiking around the world, that's what you want to do, that's your functional shoe. It doesn't have to be, you know, I like these, I think they're kind of cool. So, I mean, it could be stylish, but you know, that is your activity shoe. So, that's two. And number three, your wild card. So, this is totally dependent on what your trip is going to be consisting of. If it's more more action, maybe more leisure, maybe more beat, so whatever that's going to be, that's your third pair of shoes. It's your wild card, whatever works for you, you know? So three, that's how you do it. Now let's look at the different aspects that we're going to consider when we're actually choosing this, these specific shoes. Support. Do they offer you the support you need? Do you need more arch support? Do you have back problems? You know, how much support do you need? Those flip-flops may be okay, or maybe okay for me like five years ago. But, you know, those flip flops may work for some people, but now, you know, maybe I need broken socks to be a little bit more comfortable. So, how much support do you need? Comfort. Can you walk in them for long hours? When you're, when you're traveling, you walk so much. Or you should be, because it's fun. It's a really good way of seeing um, sightseeing. And one of my friends, I took her to Thailand with me for three weeks. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with Los Angeles, but we drive a lot. And like people in New York make fun of us and just say that we'll drive a block down the street instead of walking, and that is true. So she was very <laughs> shocked that we actually were walking. She's like, we're not taking taxis? We're walking, you know? I said, but it's hot. We're walking. You're going to go with me. You're going to travel the way I do. <laughs> she lost 15 pounds in three weeks just because she was so not used to the amount of walking that you do when you travel. And I wish I actually gained weight when I traveled. Not everybody has that, <laughs> that experience. So you should always also always pack for the size that you are currently when you leave. Not like, okay, it's, I'm gonna you know, slim down or I'm gonna gain, just present. But yeah, you do walk a lot, so comfort is essential. So if you do lose weight, what do you do? Get a belt. belt. Get a belt. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just, I mean, and enjoy it, you know. Okay. Why would you want to buy a whole new outfit if you've lost some weight okay. and you're feeling good after walking out? Walk that. Weights, are they heavier, will they pack light? Again, you want to pack, carry on, but you also want to pack light. It's very easy to have a small case that weighs a ton of bricks, and that's not fun for anyone. And if you've been to Europe, and, or had to even, you know, going in the metro or a train, and you're running, and you've got to blood. When I went, to, I went to Europe with one of my best friends, and I love her to death, but she packed this giant suitcase. And Selena, I hope you're not watching this, this right now. But <laughs> she um, packed this giant suitcase. It was massive. We were doing a typical like whirlwind tour around Europe for 12 days, a whopping 12 days, guys. So we went to Italy, um, France, England, and Spain. 12 days, like one to three days per city, in the afternoon in Paris. So, don't do that. But we did. And we didn't go with a nice light little backpack or a nice thing. You know, I took my, I did all right. It was a long time ago. It was before I should have traveled. It was a vacation. But she took a massive suitcase with a massive bag. Like, think my turtle picture times 10. And what ended up happening was her handle broke on the suitcase. Oh. oh. And she, oh my gosh. Running up the stairs, trying to, we were running late for the train, especially because we were on a tight schedule. So think about running, lugging this thing, her handle broke, oh my gosh. And then going up tiny little staircases in Italy for these tiny little rooms and you're walking in, ugh, oh, not a good idea. So on many different levels, weight has so much to do with your suitcase, you know, in size. And even if you're going on a package tour to Europe, I also went to, on a different occasion, to, on a tour to Europe with my grandma. So we went on a package tour on a bus and you think, you know, easy, right? No. It's quick, you're moving. And again, we packed, this is a very long time, guys, don't judge me. But we packed also like a super giant suitcase, like the biggest ones that are offered, plus a carry-on, bigger than that, plus a, you know, our other personal items. We packed it up, we wore nothing. We wore the same thing over and over and over, you know, we wore nothing. But we were hauling those giant cases every day out of this um, coach bus. And we were moving all the time, so that was not comfortable for her or for me. So, not a good day. Weight's important. Durability. Can they handle the wear and tear from travel? If you're going to be wearing them all the time, the last thing you want is your soles to fall off. You know, I was in England, and not that my shoes weren't actually, no, they're really cheap shoes, but 
the, literally because of the rain, the sole just fell off. I bought these cheap shoes in Thailand because I was going last minute to England and I had nothing cold, so I you know, prepared before. Anyway, the soles came off. How embarrassing is that? Like walking down the street, it was a really pretty car <laughs> thing. With my soles hanging off and the rain seeping in, I'm going to a really fancy restaurant actually. <laughs> So don't make my mistakes. Make sure they're very durable and they can handle the wear and tear of travel. Functional, we talked about this before, they're functional for a variety of activities. Style, do they match with all your outfits? So, got shoes down I think. Any questions about shoes? All right, if you do, I have this whole series on shoes currently on my site. So, stop by, check it out. Alex, I have a question about, so those trainers, like can you hike in those? Like if you wanted to go up a mountain one day or? Oh yeah, well, I think about these specific ones, I just got them. They're my new shoe. I'm gonna test them out, I'll tell you guys about that later. Um, I'm reviewing these soon. I don't even think they've been released yet, to be honest with you. Yeah, so. Reebok. They're slim tone, so they've got these cool things that, oh, I'm, I'm not here doing a commercial for them, but <laughs> they have these cool things that you guess when you walk, you're kind of working out a little bit. So oh, it's, yeah. it's good, so if you're walking with them and you're traveling, you feel like you're doing a little exercise. And also, um, but I will be testing them out hiking soon. And we've got lots of trails in LA. Yeah, oh, we do. Okay. So I'm going to try them out soon and I'll let you guys know okay. for sure. Um, but normally, I do, when I go trekking, I just use cross trainers. You know, or I just use tennis shoes. And I don't do it all that often, so I can't really justify having a pair of hiking shoes in my bag if I'm only going to do it once a year, you know? Yeah. Yes. Do you make fun of people that wear chacos? Never. Yes. Never. Oh, my chacos. They don't Never. Like anything. <laughs> they, they look don't. ridiculous. Whatever. I still have like a super cute outfit on. Like, I don't want my feet turned the other day, so I'm wearing my chacos just yeah. take pictures from the ankle up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't make fun of people that wear um, chacos because, like I said, it's all about what you're happy with. If you feel good in chacos, or maybe you don't, but you know, hey, you're feeling comfortable in them, that's all that matters, you know, it's your comfort. Um, so, I have a, this thing. The reason I don't pack is I'm worried about uh, staining my clothes and ripping them. So I, I, don't, I want to be prepared for like every eventuality. That's that's my deal. I have a question. Yes. How many times has that happened on your trip? Not very many. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> like, you know, she I have to remind myself that it's okay because I don't really want to buy clothes when I'm traveling. Not really. Why not? I, I just it's, for me it's not about the. I mean, as long as I look okay. Yeah. So here's the thing: if you do rip something. Mm -hmm. You can probably pack a little sewing kit, like a little hotel size one, and just mend it. Very, it's, it's probably not going to be anything drastic. Well, I, I was also packing this OxyClean in case I did. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> it's unavoidable, you know. And but if you have, if you happen to get a stain, mm -hmm. and if it's, it's usually when you get a stain in your shirt, it's maybe a couple of spots. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, what about using a scarf to cover that? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't come off. Just don't wear the shirt or layer it with something else. It's just one less thing you wear. Right. It's not the end of the world unless it's a shirt that's going to dramatically affect what your, you know, your needs. For example, if you're coming to Chicago, it's freezing outside, and your very durable shirt breaks or you know rips or something happens to it. Well, that's bad. Yeah. But most likely, if you've invested in a, you know, a good quality piece, that's not going to happen. Especially now because we've spoken about fabrics and how durability is important. You've got it down. So just pack a little sewing kit, and then that there's a little pen cleaner thing, or you know, those spot oh, yeah, things. Yeah, thing. yeah. yeah. Roll yeah. Clothes. yeah, those spot things. A lot of my readers like those as well. Now, wool. I understand that I'm, I actually did work with fabrics and fibers, but doesn't merino wool shrink? I mean, you wash it. Don't you have to be careful with that? Not merino wool. Not merino. Like, okay. Like merino wool, like wool, regular wool, does shrink, and it's okay. itchy and stuff. Okay. But merino wool is. So it's sort of like the ultimate fabric. It's like high performance. It does everything you want it to do. Um, this is another merino wool one. And actually, my Arctic <laughs> roommate here as well was raving about. She didn't, she didn't know what I was talking about in my presentation, like the specifics. But we were actually just having a conversation about merino wool in um, all over it. Is. All over. I like. We. I only buy stuff that's 100% merino wool. Okay. I wash it. I put it in the dryer. Mm -hmm. It makes. It never shrinks and. It's like a little bit expensive, but it's mm -hmm. like, and it, the best thing about it is it never smells. It like, you don't, <laughs> whatever, guys. Like, it smells. And is, I, is it scratchy? 
Not at all. Like, this is what I wear. Like, this is all I wear for, like, a multi-day okay. skidoo trip is I'm wearing my merino wool, like, basically, like, a onesie pajama set and then all my layers on top. And when I, like, get to my cabin, I'm just running around my merino wools. I sleep in my merino wools. Uh -huh. And the next day when I'm going skidooing again, I just put all my layers on on top and I keep going and I just bring one pair for, like, one, like, leggings on top for, like, five days skidooing. Okay. Yeah. That's another really good point for merino wool. I met a girl in Bali, and she was just raving about her merino wool. Um, I think it was like an icebreaker um, tee or something. It wasn't particularly fashionable or anything, but it was a basic tee. You could probably dress it up or do whatever you want with it. But she was raving how she didn't have to wash it for her whole trip. She was on a two-week trip. And even in Bali, where it's hot, that wasn't, it didn't smell. And if she did wash it, it would probably take an hour to dry and wash really easily. It's just a super fabric. It's great for traveling, and again, a great investment, especially in the cold. Definitely. And then look, the, she's from LA, and she's got merino wool, and I live in the Canadian Arctic, and I brought merino wool <laughs> with me too, so it's very versatile. Yeah, honestly, my readers love it. They rave about it all the time, and it is definitely okay. essential. A lot of stores like Columbia, for example, will sell things like merino wool. Okay. Because they know that the travelers that yeah. go to various continents for various reasons uh -huh. will use merino wool. So their shirts or something, Columbia the country or Columbia the brand? The brand, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. Like the brand. Do you guys have any other questions? Okay, cool. I'm almost done. Um, so, <coughs> I've been pretty neutral with my clothing. I've always been that way. For me, it's always been about the shoes. I've just always been that person. Boring clothing doesn't matter because we've got the cool accessories. That's all that matters. So, accessories. We'll look at the fashionista's favorite ones. Hat, if you want to do, if you do want, and this is, you know, if style isn't a priority, feel free to ignore this, but if you want to just turn it up a little bit, cool. This is a hat, it's great, instant style, put on a fedora, put on a little newsboy cap, that's instant style, and it covers back hair days. Because, you know, <laughs> I don't want to wash my hair every day, I should probably brought some dry shampoo and everything, <laughs> but, you know, a hat covers you from the sun, or in the cold, you have um, a knit, you know, a knit hat. So definitely great. Belt, lightweight and neutral color. I love traveling with this one. Or this one's also very light. Um, so it's super thin, it weighs nothing. I can roll it up into a tiny little thing. But it's just a fun little belt. It's not really for holding my pants up or anything, but it's just adds a little touch of fun, or I can put it on a, on a dress if I want to. It's a neutral color, and it can really go with anything. <coughs> And I prefer um, a tan, like a colored belt or accessories, because they really go with anything you make black top with. Oh, amazing. So, belt is great. Jewelry. Um, so, I mentioned jewelry a lot because the girl that I met in Mexico who packed the four pieces of clothing, she was such a minimalist that she, you know, she tried so hard that she did, she kept herself from even taking makeup or jewelry. She was trying so hard, but she thought, you know, once I, you know, when I spoke to her, she's like, you know, a pair of jewel, like earrings would have taken no space, or an eyeliner would have taken any space. So she ended up buying an eyeliner and earrings, and she still packed ultra light, you know? So always pack at least, you know, a pair of earrings, even if you want to be a minimalist, because they're the, thing they're the one thing closest to your face, so people will notice it more. So I don't have a lot of other jewelry going on my, in my outfit today, but you guys are looking at these, I'm assuming, so that's all right. Um, purse, crossbody, avoiding theft, where's mine? Theft, and I've got a few things to show you guys. Um, so, oh no, crossbody purses are really great because, well purses are fun, this is my purse that I use to travel with and it doesn't look very functional but it is, um, one it's kind of fun, I like it because it gives me a little something to my outfits, two it's a crossbody bag, I've just turned it into a hobo bag by tying its, um, its handle so it's technically going to be longer, it's just stuck, but the reason why it's important as a crossbody bag is also to avoid theft. Unfortunately, purse snatching is common in some parts of the world. So if you have your purse like this, there goes your bag. You know what I mean? If you have your bag across your body, and I usually put it in the front, then you're less likely, less likely, not 100%, less likely to be a victim of a purse snatching. And people also um, ask me how else they can theft-proof their gear. And I've got a, few, a couple of things to show you guys wrote an article about this as well. I use these little, 
I use these little, um, the, what are they called? Bra pouches. So you just kind of snap them to your bra and you have them underneath your clothing. Super effective. I love it, and I've always carried my money in a pouch my grandma made me, but now I found these, so now I'm using these. Um, so I, I bought the two that are available on Amazon, and I wasn't sure which one to get, so I, t I did a comparison. And they're not the perfect item, so but they're both really handy. I just don't know which one to recommend you guys, so I'm gonna show you both. So the way it works, you just unsnap it, or take off the little thing, and it, you can fit you know, a lot of cash, or your cards in here, and that's really all you need. And it's discreet and hidden. And unless, and um, one thing I don't recommend that you do, even if you have a money belt, a neck pouch. There's a lot of different ways to hide your um, your valuables. But when you have your hidden things, please don't go to pay something and you know dig into your bra. Or a lot of people will wear their money belt outside of their clothing. Like you're supposed to hide. <laughs> all the time like you could just go yank it off slice it off people do you know cut things off why would you have your money belt this is to hide your stuff not tell everybody hey look I'm a target this is where I'm keeping my money from you come and get me so make sure you're always hiding it underneath your clothing but these are awesome for money and cards um, uh, underwear I, I haven't worn this yet so don't think it's like dirty or um, it's brand new but it's um, underwear where you can actually with big enough for I didn't bring my passport in here but I've it before and you can put your passport in here so they have underwear with pockets that kind of stuff so definitely lots of options to keep your belongings safe put that away and lastly for accessories scarves it's a fashionista favorite travelers love it they go all day long about it actually have um, met she's not here but I met someone who read my blog and she actually bought a scarf and you know I was always wondering how to do it and there's a million ways Lots of benefits to having a scarf. You can tie it in a million ways. It instantly dresses up any outfit. And actually, they don't even let you into Europe without a scarf because that's just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you have to have one on to, to fit in. So definitely don't forget to take your scarf to Europe or buy one there. But yeah, instantly adds, you know, just add a bit of color to my outfit, a little bit of a pop. So that's kind of fun. Um, and that's another reason why it's cool to have some neutral outfits too because you can change that up very easily regular scarf, there's a bunch of tutorials. For me, I'm a lazy girl when it comes to style. So I have a circle scarf. This is easy for me. I put it on, put it in. I put it on, and I'm ready to go. I don't have to worry about tying it. You could, you can get creative and you know, do little things and tie it in different ways and it'll work, but it's easy. Another reason why I do like circle scarves a lot, because I get really hot very easily in hot countries and I don't want to be disrespectful and show, show my shoulders when I shouldn't. So I still wear a tank top, but I just do this. And obviously there's a, a million different circle scarves, and I just wear it like a bolero sweater. So like, oh, and I cover my back right? and that. Nice. So in some places, though, you also have to cover your collarbone. So let's turn it into a pashmina. You know, I just kind of get myself into it. Make sure my back's covered shoulders and throw it over my collarbone. So I've now worn it as a pashmina. And I really like this um, circle scarf. I got it super cheap in, like for a couple pounds in Primark in England. And it's been around, you know, it works for me. It's lightweight. It does. So it doesn't have to be anything special. You don't have to get a particular brand or anything, but it's, it's a really easy accessory to add. And people love scarves. So uh, a few quick tips for toiletries, just really quick. Um, pack only the amount of, clo of toiletries that you actually really need, and I forgot them in the room, but, you know, three ounces of your three ounce TSA friendly size, sometimes it's too much. I really don't need three ounces of my face scrub to come here. So I just bought a smaller container and just put a couple drops. But you guys actually ever paid attention to how much shampoo you do use? You know, I count the pumps, you know, like, hey, I use like five. So then I just put in however many I need for shorter trips. If it's anything longer where three ounce isn't going to be enough for you, then you need to buy along the way, and that's okay. Invest a little bit more money along the way for, you know, comfort and carry-on purposes. Um, solids and malt to use items are essential. All the girls love Lush solid, um, solid shampoos and everything. So look for solids or instead of a liquid face cleaner, you know, wipes and stuff like that. 
test new products before your trip. So, you know, see if they're actually going to work. Oh, and I forgot to tell you something super important. Okay. With your clothing as well, test it before you go. You know, once you try it on, but wash it. If you really want something to quick dry, test it out, wash it, and leave it in your bathroom and see how long it takes to dry. If it takes, I don't know, like an hour? Yes, awesome. If it takes, um, like, overnight, it's not too bad. But the last thing you want is your bus coming the next day in the morning, and you've got to go in your cotton heavy harm pants. It is happening to me. So your cotton heavy harm pants are hanging on the curtain. They're drenched wet. So you forget them and leave them behind. But, you know, so uh -huh. wash and test things out before you go. Yeah. Um, for makeup, you can just get one eyeshadow palette, and my tip is just kind of change the depth. So lighter in the day, darker at night, same palette. Easy tip. And ultimately, the last tip is love what you pack. And if you love the clothing that's in your suitcase, then you're gonna feel happy and comfortable. It'll be an easier trip, stress-free. So love everything that's in your bag. And any last questions? You know what, what, what type of laundry soap are you using? Is it like the little sheets, or is it a liquid, or the granular? Because that can get, when I did a trek in Mount Blanc, I was gone three weeks. Yeah. Um, and we were washing things out every night, you know, after we finished trekking. Um, and it was the one thing that I wish I could, you know, do better. That's really interesting. I use whatever is available. But, uh, like anywhere, whatever I'm doing, wherever I am, I use shampoo. I use body soap. I actually really like to use body soap. I use body soap. So, so if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for clothes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And if you're not doing it forever, you know, okay. it's just temporary. You can handle it. Tide also and makes really good like packets for washing things in the sink. Okay. Yeah. Like if you go to like travel sections, you know, the little bottles of everything. They have a whole section that where you can buy like actual stuff if you're good, if you have a washing machine. But they have just a little itty bitty packet. That's what I take when I travel. Yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the brand? It's Tide. Oh, Tide. Yeah. yeah. There's a long term traveler. I, I usually just, there's a philosophy called Bit. Buy it there. Okay. Yeah. So if you're, if you're just, you're going to be in the country, go to their grocery store, just go to their market, use the get a little, do, do up your clothes, and then leave the soap when you're done. Yeah. When you're packed and you go. In Guatemala, in Guatemala, actually, I found that they had a bar detergent. So instead of you know throwing the detergent in the washing machine because they had wash, they use the bar detergent. So it, it does exist. They use it in other countries, yeah. you know. So you can use it as well. Yeah. So it's cool right. to actually also discover things. Right. Yeah. Yes. So the girl that she had only four items of clothing. How how much did her bag weigh? How many pounds did she ever tell you? I don't think I, it might be. I'm, I I can probably look it up. But I don't really remember. It was she just had like a, a backpack like a Jan Sport. I'm going to high school backpack. Wow. wow. Going to high school. <laughs> well, you know, well, you know what I mean. Like, what are those, I do. What are those, your regular high school bags? <laughs> wow. I don't know. It was so impressive. That is crazy. I admire yeah, that. She's impressive. totally inspired my talking list because just understanding the like the what process she went through just changed my life really. And now I'm back in her flight as well. I do have a demo for you guys, but it's getting late and I was going to show you guys to, okay, I'll just tell you. I won't show you because there's no time unless you want me to. Um, so I talk I talk about packing cubes all day long on my site. People are like, why packing cubes? Why not compressing compression sacks? Why not folders? This is what works for me, and it, it makes me happy, so I use them. And they work so well. So all this clothing fits into these tiny three little cubes. So that's really impressive. And the way that happens is, if you guys want, you can leave or I can keep doing it. I can show you real quick. Um, so I have my little bit of uh, my packing formula that I use. So fold it up as much as you can. And of course, we're trying to choose fabrics that um, are wrinkle resistant. In the heat, the wrinkles you know release and on their own naturally. And in the um, cold, the fabrics don't really wrinkle as much. So not too bad. So. Make it as small as you can. Put it in the cube. Now I close it, and everything after that goes in from the top. So I don't use my cubes just to organize. I use them to compress and maximize my space. This is how I got them into my Delsey bag over here. Oh, and we also have to get to the giveaway. All right, let's see the next one. That's kind of show you everything. So fold. 
small as possible. Obviously, you'd probably do this a lot neater than I'm doing it right now. That goes a little more. So, as tiny as you can. You can even um, you can even close tie with hair ties and then use the hair ties after separately. Rubber bands, whatever you'd like. Can you can you put jeans and, and stuff, something like that? I put leather jackets in there. Mm -hmm. Everything. It you works. can actually tie, roll them down tight enough. To yeah. And because it just it compresses it, and you keep pushing and you keep pushing right. everything in, squeezing. Oh, maybe I should do the big one. Okay, so easy, right? Shirts done. This all the shirts <coughs> that I have here fit into this one tiny little cube. And anything I've spoken about today, you guys can find more information on my site. I'm publishing a full transcript of this presentation. I'll have the video and the PowerPoint on my site as well. So there's a business card on the table. I can give you guys more. So the dirty clothes go back in there, or do you put those in a separate thing? I'm, I'm somewhat of a germaphobe. I'm traveling, I've become way less because I kind of have to turn your, you know, yeah. to certain things. But I just get a plastic bag and stick them back in That's what I To kind of protect it, you know? And I put these in the washing machine, so if they still, um, they get clean and they last. They're, and they're 20 bucks, come on. It's a really good investment to pack light. I'll show you guys. So this is a big monster one. This one, normally I wouldn't like to make so bulky, but because it's going to be cold, you know, you want to have that one thing. It's not. It's um, the merino wool one, so you know it's going to be effective. <sighs> so this one's big. I was like, oh no, is it going to be too bulky? And that's the thing about bulky items. If you wear them a lot, then they become the pros outweigh the cons. You know, if you're wearing them every day, like I didn't want to pack this maxi dress originally to go to Southeast Asia because it felt bulky, but I wore it all the time. And I could even wear it in conservative areas just with my, you know, my little circle scarf covering my shoulders. And that felt very respectful, so that was cool. Um, so pack it up and let's shove it in. We're doing a lot of shoving. Move things out of the way. And I'm moving quickly so it's not going to go as fast as possible. But big thing, little cute. A little bit of effort. Push it in. <laughs> Close it up. It does work, I promise. Just try and hurry for you guys. And the zippers so far, they've been really good. You can also use other like compression things. Cool. Got that in there. So what I do after that? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so I push it in as far down as it'll go. Squeeze. So I've got a little bit of space. Sometimes, depending on the clothing, you know, there's other little gaps that I fill in. I'll open up a little corner and squeeze something in. I've got a packing video, you know, online as well. You guys can see this online. Um, but after that, I'll see um, what other clothing I'd be able to fit in there. All that fits into these other two cubes. So I'm going to show you just what I put into this one. I had originally planned to pack these other little scarves in there. So, you yeah. know, fold it up, get it in there as small as possible neatly, of course, and then squeeze, keep squeezing, I'm going to be messy about it now, keep squeezing until, oh, look, there's still space, I'm going to keep going, what else can I shove in there? T-shirt? I'm going to try my pajamas, pajamas are one thing people also always ask me about a lot, um, that green top that I was using, I like it because I can work out in it, I can sleep in it, and then wash it, it dries in half an hour, so it's super quickly, it's made by Adea. You can find it also on my site, um, more information about it. So again, pack super small. Silk is actually also really good for pajamas as well. Great fabric. Alex, awesome. we're going to have to close a little okay. bit. IT is going to come in a second. Cool. All right, guys. So um, you give me your email. I will send you guys all your free packing. And feel free to send me any questions at all. Um, my Facebook page, people are always asking questions there and providing answers. So feel free to go on there anytime. So this will close. <laughs>
Alex is kind enough to re-gift her gift. I won it yesterday, so I'm hooking you guys up with the giveaway. D-E-L. Okay, everybody, I've never seen everyone jump on their phones so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, add Delcy on Twitter, and then, you know, shoot a tweet that how much you love this suitcase, and one of you guys is going to win. Delcy USA. Are you paying Thanks, Alex. Alex. Thank you. We love you so much. Thank you. Um, are you picking, when are you picking the winner? Um, Should we do it?